Hey, I think I heard something. I'm gonna go check it out. You stay here. Hi, I'm a forester here. I guess you saw we had some excitement here last night with an attempted break-in. I'm glad I had my FMP9 with a good gun-mounted light on it. It sure came in handy. I've gone back and forth over the past few months over which type of light system to use, either a gun-mounted light like the Streamlight TLR3 or a separate tactical flashlight like this 4.7s, and this is the Maelstrom X7. Both have advantages and both have disadvantages. And so I thought I'd do this video just to uh, uh, demonstrate some of the advantages of each. Since you saw the Streamlight in action last night, I'll go over some of the uh, specs for it first. Now I have it mounted on my FMP9 and it fits it very well. Streamlight puts several keys in with the package and even though the FMP is not a gun, that it says is compatible with the flashlight, one of the keys fit it very well. Uh, the only thing that I could a have asked for any better is if the key had been a little longer to slide that light back maybe a quarter to a half of an inch. But this isn't a problem. I'd say this fits it very well. Well, I'll go over some of the specs of the flashlight first. The body of it is made out of a polymer. This end cap is made out of an aircraft aluminum. I'd say I call it fairly heavy duty. The price I paid was $87. I bought it online and I don't know that that's that great of a price but I thought it was a fair price. Batteries are important and this operates on one CR2 lithium battery. I've heard some people say that lithium batteries or these CR2s are fairly expensive but if you buy them in 10 packs you can get the price down under $2 per battery. Now this light has two modes. It has a always on mode and that's if you push that switch up and uh, that puts out 110 lumens and it'll burn for one and a half hours. If you just want momentary light you push that switch down and it only stays on as long as you have the switch down. So that's pretty convenient. The light weighs 2.3 ounces so it's, it's fairly light. It doesn't add substantial weight to the gun. Okay, it has certain advantages, and like I say, it has some disadvantages also. I'll go over the advantages first. And the primary advantage to me with this gun-mounted light is that it's very convenient. I only have to reach for two things. Now, I say two things because the first thing is going to be my pair of glasses. There is no way I would even think of using a gun if I didn't have my glasses on. So once I put those, my glasses on, the only other thing I have to reach for is this handgun. The, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but you can go back in the video and look, and this, this light puts out a very concentrated beam. And um, that has certain advantages that I've come to realize. You know, there are models of this light that have lasers also that are incorporated into them, but I don't really think that uh, I would need a laser with the light because that beam is so concentrated. Go back and look at the end of the video where I focus the gun and the light on the intruder. And notice the sights are right in the center of that beam. If you put the center of the beam on your target, the sights are going to be pretty much centered there also. So that's a, that's a nice little advantage that I wouldn't have known without actually using the light. The switch is very easy to access. I access it with my uh, off hand, my weak hand. And so it's very easy to access. And also it takes less coordination than having to use uh, a flashlight and a, a gun. Now there are some disadvantages. One is that it makes for a tarp making you a target. Because if you have this gun, you turn the light on, and you're sighting down the sights as you search the room, that light is going to be basically in center with your, with your body or, or your head, which can make you a target. Also, the light doesn't put out nearly as much light as, for instance, the 4.7's Maelstrom X7. 
So it puts out only 110 lumens, which is, which is around one-fourth of the maximum output of the four-sevenths light that I'll be comparing it to. But the main question is, is that enough light? And uh, you'll have to judge for yourself. That's why uh, I'm showing both of these lights together. There's one other disadvantage to having a gun-mounted light, and that's that there may be a temptation to use the flashlight as a, or the gun as a flashlight, uh, just to light up a dark corner uh, when you're searching for something. And I don't know that that's a good thing. In fact, that's not a good thing. Um, this should only be used in emergency situations and not as a flashlight. But there is a tendency to do that. I have done that one time, I'll admit to. All right, well, one thing that you don't know is that we had two break-ins last night, or two attempted break-ins, it's not just one. Take a look. I caught the other on tape also. I think I heard something. I'm going to go check it out. You stay here. That punk was up to no good. You could tell just by looking at him. Two break-ins, though, or attempted break-ins in one night, we may have to consider moving. I was glad that I had the Maelstrom X7, though, handy so that I could respond with it. It lit up the room so bright there was no place that he could hide. And the amount of light it puts out is really one of its strong points. It has seven different sets, and on high it puts out 480 lumen. And it can do that for 1.3 hours. It also has a medium, low, and something called moon glow, which is just enough light to light your way if you're going out to get the paper. It has three special modes, strobe, SOS, and beacon. Now those seven modes are split among two different sets, and you access the sets by turning the head of the flashlight four times 90 degrees. That's not that easy done, and sometimes I don't get it to switch sets, sometimes I do. That gets at one of the disadvantages that I'll get to later. To go over some of the specs, it's six inches long, it's one and a half or one inch in diameter here around the main body, and then it widens to one and a half inch in diameter around the head. It's 5.1 ounces in weight, and that additional weight is uh, actually a good thing. It's about twice the weight of the Streamlight TLR3. But that's a good thing because this thing, this flashlight, can actually serve as a weapon. It's uh, got a stainless steel strike bezel. Let me see if I can give you a close-up of that. That can do some harm. And the body of it, I believe, is aircraft-grade aluminum. But that additional weight actually I think is a good thing. It runs off of two batteries, two CR123 batteries, and if you buy those in 10 packs you can get the price per battery down to under two dollars. Now I'll go over some advantages of this flashlight. There are also some disadvantages. The main advantage is that this serves as a weapon all in its own right, whether you have a handgun or not. If I have a handgun, I grip it around this ring right here with my left hand and that makes a great striking tool if it's needed. But it also serves as a great flashlight for your handgun. It takes a little bit more coordination than just using a gun mounted light. The second main advantage of it is the amount of light it puts out. And at 480 lumens, that's enough light to literally temporarily blind, blind an, an intruder, which will give you an advantage for a, a good period of time. Also, another advantage is that it doesn't present a target like I described for that TLR3 because it's going to be offset away from your body. If someone aims at the light, they may graze you, but they're not going to, if they're not going to aim right at your head or your chest like it would if they were aiming at the TLR3. One of the disadvantages is that it's something else that you have to reach for. If time was of the essence, you may not have the time to reach for, in my case, my glasses, the gun, 
and a flashlight separately. So that could be a disadvantage. If time wasn't of the essence, then that's not a disadvantage. Also, another disadvantage might be that it puts out too much light. When uh, you're on high and you walk into a room, basically that's going to light up the whole room. And so it may alert the intruder to your presence. And then I've already mentioned it, but the difficulty in switching from one mode to the other, uh, it's not dependable, at least for me, and so it forces me to choose between the modes. And I've ended up choosing the second mode, or the special mode, which gives me easy access to the high and a strobe function. So there you have it, two different flashlight systems, one with a gun-mounted light and one with a separate standalone tactical flashlight. And I guess the question is, is one system inherently better than the other? I personally don't think one is better. I think the most important criteria is the time factor. How much time do you have to respond? If you first become aware of an intruder when he's breaking into the house, coming down the hallway, and possibly into your bedroom, I think I would feel very fortunate to be able to access this FMP9 with a gun-mounted light and defend my family. If time isn't so much of a factor, and it's more of a situation where I'm in a neighborhood watch or patrolling the outside of my house, uh, because of its, the amount of light that it puts out and the fact that you can use this light as a weapon, I would much prefer the Maelstrom X7. So there's advantages to both. And personally, you don't have to decide. You can use both. And in my own situation in home defense, I will continue using both of these flashlights. I hope this has presented some useful information to you and that you've enjoyed the video. Y'all have a good day. Take care.